Critical thinking is a way of thinking that involves actively and skillfully analyzing, evaluating, and reflecting on information in order to reach a well-rounded conclusion or decision. That's what critical thinking is, right? It's something that requires you to think independently and objectively. A lot of us think subjectively. We can't remove ourselves from a lot of our ideas and because we speak from our experience and our opinions, a lot of the times nobody can ever really debunk your ideas because you don't want to let them go. You stood by them, you bounded yourself to them, and therefore you've limited your ev evolution because of this way of, of being. Okay, So in order for you to be a critical thinker through and through, you have to be willing to let go and even question your own ideas and traditions and cultures. But if you're not willing to do any of that, you can't call yourself a critical thinker, unfortunately. Right? Critical thinking also forces you to consider multiple perspectives. It forces you to gather evidence, use logic and reason to evaluate arguments and ideas that are thrown in your way. Right? Or even ideas that are just existing currently. Right? Critical thinking is a valuable skill, right? It can also help you make better decisions which is clear, I've kind of alluded to that already, it's going to help you solve problems, right? It's also going to allow you to think more creatively. I think those things are pretty important to have. What a skill set to have, right? It's beneficial. You can use it in everyday scenarios and situations, right? You can help it, you know, use it to help others evolve, do better, make better decisions themselves, Okay. But you can't be afraid to be a critical thinker. That's the other part that a lot of people don't, don't factor in. Is that a lot of us want to be critical thinkers, or we think we are, but we're afraid to ask or question or evaluate, right? Or even assess. And that's where we fall short, okay? There is no one-size-fits-all for critical thinking. However, there are some key steps to help you engage in critical thinking. And I'll share some of those with you. Right. For starters, you have to be able to identify a problem, right, or a question that is presented to you. Before you can start thinking critically about a topic, you need to understand what the problem or the question is that you're trying to solve or answer. That's where it begins, right? You need to have a topic. You need to understand what the problem is. Right. Or what the question that is being posed in order to even begin on this journey. So now that you have the question. Right. Or what the problem is or what the topic is. You have to go to the next step, which is gather the information. Right. What information you ask. Anything that's going to help me come to a better or the strongest, or the most viable conclusion. That's the information. Right. So you've identified the problem or the question, gather as much relevant information as possible, right? This might mean conducting research, take, you know, talking to experts, um, taking notes, consulting reliable sources. Anybody who has some sort of knowledge or experience, right, with this problem or question, speak to them. Read about their thoughts and see how they came to their conclusions, that's your research. So gather as much information as possible. And once you have all that information that you need, analyze it. Right? Carefully analyze it in order to identify where the biases may be, the assumptions, right? Or even the inconsistencies. Because there will be some. Right? This is your job. This is what you need to do as a critical thinker. This involves looking for evidence to support or refute the information. Okay? And, and considering the alternative perspectives as well, what other people thought about it, who didn't necessarily agree with it, all right, and what their explanations were. You want to consider all that and look into all of that. Don't accept any information without analyzing it. You just can't. Okay? You just can't. It's not going to be useful. It's not going to be conclusive. Right? So once you've done all of that, now you want to evaluate the arguments, right, that are being made. 
This involves you weighing the strengths and weaknesses, right? All the pros and cons of each argument and then considering how well, right, they address the problem or the question. You have to consider that, right? Now that once you've gotten all this information, this is where the work comes in, right? You've done all this legwork, all this research. Now you have to come to a conclusion. You have to draw your own conclusion based on the information that you've gathered, that you've analyzed, that you've evaluated, okay? Right? You have to draw a well-rounded conclusion, right? And this might involve making a decision, right? Ultimately, you got to take action. You've got all this research. Now you got to take action. You got to take a position, right? Formulating a plan of action or offering a recommendation. Where do you stand, after all of this research, you heard other people's opinions, you've gotten their testimonials and all of that stuff. Where do you stand? 